Combat. The name says it all. I'm Hakeem Branch. Rob Jarrell. And today, we're going to recap the Juan Manuel Marquez Mike Alvarado fight that happened this past weekend. Was it May 19th? Yes. No, no. it was the 17th. I'm 17th, sorry. yeah. Yeah, May 17th. Sorry about that. But in this fight, you had the best of both worlds. You had guys who were brawling, but they were still employing the sweet science. They you could tell they learned some good fundamentals. They kept their hands up, which made for some precision punching and an all-around enjoyable fight. Go ahead, Rob. All right, so this was a little not what we expected because Marquez has, again, surprised us. He came out. He looked very fresh, very active against uh, Alvarado, who was the bigger man in this fight. And just seemed like he couldn't keep up with the activity or the uh, the dynamic style of Marquez. And I expected Alvarado to be the aggressor in this fight. And I don't know what Marquez's point he was trying to make, but he made it. Because when he threw his punches, he, he, he was looking to set traps and he never really threw just one punch. What Alvarado's problem was he really didn't try to work any kind of combinations. And not only that, it led to a knockdown um, of Alvarado by Marquez with a pretty nice uh, right hand. Yeah. Um, Marquez set the pace early. He landed cleanly. He landed often. And like I said, it was very precise because Alvarado did keep his hands up for the most part. Even when he was punching with Marquez mm -hmm. or Marquez was punching with him, they both kept their hands up and protected their face but they were able to fit the shots around the guard, which is very, very high-level stuff there, especially when you're in the heat of the moment like that. A lot of guys forget their fundamentals, and that's why they end up getting hit a lot. But these guys were being very precise and fitting the shots through the guard, such as that eighth-round knockdown that uh, Rob just mentioned. Now, in the ninth round, Alvarado had a little get-back, as like Roy Jones says, when he caught... Marquez making a technical flaw. Not only did he catch him with his hands down, he caught him squared up and down with Marquez. That's right. Um, he wasn't hurt from the shot, but it's still a winning round for Alvarado because he was able to drop him. But even in that round, Marquez did great work still. And from probably about round seven on, I mean, it, it was a pretty heated matchup. Um, you can still tell Alvarado wasn't quite keeping up with Marquez, or I should say Marquez was edging out the rounds, but it, he made him work for it. Similar to the uh, Mayweather-Maidana fight where Maidana was making Floyd work, but Floyd was the one landing the more precise punches and still winning the rounds even though it was competitive in those rounds. Now, what I saw was in those last few rounds after uh, Alvarado knocked uh, Marquez down. Marquez was a little bit more careful not to make that mistake again. If I'm not mistaken, if it was in the 10th or 11th round, near the end of the round, he got caught flush with a, uh, was it a right hand where he almost went down? Yeah. yeah. And they had to do the replay where to see if Marquez's uh, glove touched the canvas, which it did not. Um, Marquez was very, looked very strong. He's very aware to keep, to squat and keep his hands up. So that, I mean, that's a veteran move. I think that's something he's been working on, um, trying to strengthen his legs just in case he got caught with that shot. But he looked a little bit more careful while still trying to set his pace and, and keep his hand moves. He threw a lot of combinations in that, in that fight. Oh, yeah. And not just that Alvarado was there to be hit, but a lot of it was scoring. Yeah, that's right. So we got to give props to both guys because they laid it out there gave us an entertaining fight, and they are all lucrative options for both of them coming out post-fight. For the winner, Marquez, we all know the most lucrative fight, a fight that we're a little on the fence on, which is Pacquiao 5. I, for one, don't really want to see it again, but if they made it, I'm going to watch it, just because. Hoping for a strong undercard? Yes. Very strong undercard. But, you know, the 
the fight fan in me is going to watch it anyway, even though I don't want them to make that fight. I think that their story has pretty much been written. The only reason they would fight each other is because there's nobody else at top rank for them to fight, and it's going to make them a boatload of money. And I think that's the reason that they are going to end up fighting. But Aram is going to have to offer a lot of money to Marquez cause, because I think Marquez is comfortable with how the last fight ended. Yep. Very comfortable and it, it just doesn't want to happen again. But Pacquiao has to get his get back. So if he loses again or if he wins again, we'll see where we go from there. Now with Alvarado, he has called out Rios for the rubber match between the two of them. Um, sometime in, if I'm not mistaken, September, October is when they were trying to fight. So that will be interesting um, because a lot of people are actually calling for Rios for Vodnikov, which itself would be extremely interesting. Yeah, um, I don't know if that one's going to get made. Um, I think they were trying to make it before they made the... Provodnikov Algeri fight and it, it fell apart for some reason. Well, apparently it was said that there is a plan for Rios. God gotcha. knows what that is. Yeah. Um honestly it's probably a tough fight for them to take after Pacquiao. He hasn't fought since he lost to Pacquiao, right? Right. I don't remember him. Yeah. They're trying to set him up for something, probably get him into the title picture at one forty. Or um because yeah, he, he looked completely out of his element at one forty seven. Okay. Given it was Manny Pacquiao. Right. But I will say something very interesting. This past weekend, Oscar De La Hoya and Bob Arum apparently met and had a conversation. And Oscar De La Hoya actually made the statement that he would like to work with Arum again to try to make the fights that we've all been calling for. And we know the Richard Safer does not want to work with Arum. We know Mayweather does not want to work with Arum. And I'll hate it. Does not want to work with Aram, considering that he advises an ass load of fighters yeah. on Golden Boy. We're gonna we have a theory about that, but that's coming gonna come in another video. Yeah, so Oscar's a little outnumbered right now. Right, but if he works with Aram, there are interesting fights that can be made. Oh, very much so. Broner Pacquiao, Broner Rios, which probably have the most ignorant smack talking of all time. Yeah. Well, if they do decide to come together there's really only one fight that can be made we're not gonna see that <laughs> yeah unless unless both parties Pacquiao and Mayweather are guaranteed I would say 50 plus million that's not happening unless something gets done that we are not expecting it would have to be 50 million or more yeah so that's it guys thanks for watching this video make sure you like it Comment with your thoughts below. Uh, share it on Facebook, Google+, wherever you frequent on the social networks. Um, if you have a question for us, you can hit us up in, on, uh, in the comment section. You can hit us up on Facebook at our Facebook page, Capital Combat. You can hit us up on Google+, Capital Combat. Or you can hit us up at CapitalOfCombat at gmail.com. Anything else you want to add? Um, enjoy the fights this weekend. Should be interesting. Should be a few good fights. No need to... Uh, Donaire return. Well, not this weekend, but it's next week as well. Yeah. But there should be some interesting fights this on this weekend, as well as uh, UFC uh, 173. Three. Yep. 173 with Henry Barral versus TJ Dillashaw and Daniel Cormier versus Dan Henderson. Yep. And they also have uh, Robbie Lawler and Jake Ellenberger, which should be a good one as well. So we'll catch you guys in the next video, and hope you enjoyed this one. Peace. This is round one, and you've already lost. They don't seem to see that everything we've done is coming and gone. My fists are on fire. I perform till I perspire. My demons are in a rage. Keep thinking that it's the game. I kick rhyme, hurricane. I told them I don't play. I'm liquid. Black street fighter. Street fighter. Street fighter.